Story recapped here. Today, I'm going to show a 2019 drama, horror, mystery film called Girl on the Third Floor. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Don Koch arrives at their newly purchased Victorian house with their dog, Cooper. He traveled ahead of his pregnant wife, Liz, hoping to renovate the house in time for the baby's arrival. Don gets started on the renovation immediately, while Cooper senses that something is not right with the house. A marble rolls on the bedroom floor and Cooper chases after it. As Don sets out cleaning the house, he meets Ellie Mueller, the pastor living across the street. The next morning, Liz video calls Don and asks about the house. Don goes back to fixing the house, this time, covering up the gaping hole in the living room. As he's fixing the walls, he finds old newspapers and lingerie hidden within it. Later that night, Don goes to an empty bar and strikes up a conversation with the bartender, Geary. Geary warns him about the house, telling him that it's bad news, but Don dismisses this as a screwed up joke. When he gets home, he explores the house looking for the dog while a haunting figure looms behind him. He eventually finds Cooper and settles in for the night after his call with Liz. He goes to a BDSM porn site to have some fun but Cooper distracts him. He moves his bed upstairs and locks himself in. The next day, Don sets his eye on fixing the kitchen sink. He hits one of the pipes and a burst of black sludge covers his whole face. He cleans himself outside and then meets Sarah. Sarah flirts with him before she leaves and this flatters Don. He continues to experience weird stuff in the house with the haunting presence following him around. As he tries to paint one of the bedrooms, he spots Cooper outside with Sarah. He invites Sarah inside for a smoke and after a flirtatious back and forth, they have a hot fling in Don's bedroom. Cooper is left outside, barking aggressively at a shadow looming at the end of the hallway. Just as Sarah leaves, a thundering crash erupts from upstairs. Don checks out the bedroom and sees that the ceiling has caved in. He inspects the attic and is shocked to see a viewing box structured on top of the bedroom. Sarah visits him again that night, but this time he turns her down, telling her that what they had was just a one-time thing. Later on, he dreams of his wife Liz and they make love together. While in the middle of doing it, Don feels confused as the woman morphs into Sarah's face and then back to his wife again. He tries to ignore it and closes his eyes. When he opens them, a horrifying monster with a deformed face is on top of him. Don wakes up in cold sweat, feeling relieved that it was only a dream. That very morning, Mila stops by and helps him fix up the ceiling. They finish up and hang out at Gary's bar. When Don wakes up the next day, he finds Milo already up and fixing the walls and then makes a snide remark about his supposed assistant. Feeling confused, Don walks into the kitchen to see Sarah brewing coffee. Don is angry and tells her that he doesn't want to see her ever again. Milo catches them mid-fight and then confronts him about Sarah. Don eventually admits the affair and Milo is raging, reminding him that he is Liz's friend too. Don walks out with Cooper and Milo goes back to fixing the walls. He hears a faint giggle and looks around to see a marble rolling by. He follows the marble to the basement and is surprised to see Sarah. He tells Sarah to leave before Don finds her, but she surprises him with a hammer to the face. He manages to crawl his way back to the stairs and sees the deformed woman on top of the landing. He's frozen in terror as Sarah lands a finishing blow to his head. When Don comes home, he assumes that Milo has gone away. He continues with work and calls Liz. During their call, Liz spots a woman walking behind him. Don is frightened, knowing that he's alone in the house and he sets out to look for the intruder. As he reassures Liz, he spots the back door wide open. The very next day he installs new locks on the doors and adds security cameras. Their neighbor, Ellie, interrupts his work to check on him and give him encouraging words. The haunting doesn't stop that night as a marble lures Cooper downstairs. It follows the marble to the basement and sees Sarah, unaware of its impending doom. When Don wakes up, Cooper is missing. He looks for the dog around the house and finds it chopped up, its bloody parts in the dryer. Don immediately calls the police but they don't take it seriously. Don later sees Sarah in the living room that night. He apologizes to her and tells her that he has a surprise for her in the kitchen. Just as they enter the room, Don strikes her on the head with a hammer. Coldness takes over his body as he cleans up the blood on the floor. He wraps Sarah's body and binds it with duct tape, dragging it all the way down to the basement. He stuffs the body within the walls and starts covering it. Suddenly, a call interrupts his work. It's Liz asking him why Milo has been trying to call her. Don is finally tipped over the edge. He lashes out at his wife and then hangs up. When he goes back to the basement, Sarah's body is gone. Don runs around the house and hears giggling coming from the attic. He goes up, investigating further, and finds a false wall. He breaks it down and sees another compartment, its walls filled with disturbing children's drawings. 
At the end of his wits, Don drills a hole on the wall and sneaks in a camera. He sees the drywall, dirt, and dust, and then he sees something else. The disfigured woman appears, its mouth with a thousand teeth snarling at him. He runs to the living room and begins smashing the walls, revealing a bloody cavity within it. With each strike, he reveals the secret of the house. As another hole opens, he sees Milo's dead face pop out. He hears another giggle and sees an eye peeking through another hole. He then opens his phone and receives a photo message from Sarah giving him the finger. As he turns around, one of his cabinet drawers opens and the disfigured woman emerges. Her face is slashed wide open with her teeth hungry for blood. A marble drops down to the floor and makes its way under Don's skin. He screams feeling the pain erupt from his body. He runs to the bedroom and grabs a cutter, tearing his shin open to get the ball out. He continues screaming as the marble makes its way up to his body and then to his neck. He begs the woman to make it stop, but she only giggles at him. He slashes his neck as he withers from the pain. The marble reaches his head and then pops out of his eye, leaving a bloody trail behind. He crawls on the floor and looks at the woman. The last thing he sees is more marbles rolling down the floor, ready to penetrate his skin. Liz arrives the next day and starts looking for Don and Cooper. Assuming they've only gone out for a walk, she explores the house. She discovers an old newspaper, revealing the house to be an old brothel from 1901 where the local police were unable to find the murdered girl's body. A sound catches her attention and she finds a marble in the basement. When Liz comes back up to the kitchen, she meets Sarah. Liz is skeptical of her but her thoughts are interrupted by the doorbell. She then meets Ellie who warns her about the house. Just like Don, Liz dismisses her neighbor's concern. When she goes back to the house, she begins experiencing weird occurrences. She pulls out a wad of hair from the sink and sees an eyeball peeking back at her. She screams and starts calling Don but finds his phone in the bedroom. Feeling worried, she seeks out Ellie's help. Ellie then tells her that the house has a habit of testing the men who live in it and warns her again to stay away from the house. When Liz goes home that night, she experiences a bizarre vision from the house's past. The home is suddenly filled with men in suits. She explores the house looking for Don, but she's ushered into the viewing box in the attic. From there, she witnesses the show of a woman engaging in aggressive sexual activities with a man wearing a grotesque costume. As she turns to look around in the attic, she spots a young child making a drawing on the wall. The same grotesque man approaches the child and gives her a bag of marbles. Liz runs down and finds the house back to its normal state. She then faces Sarah at the stairs who reveals to her the house's terrifying secret. It turns out that the deranged woman was an innocent girl that the brothel owner used and killed. Sarah was also another victim of these men. She lunges at Liz with a cutter, but she manages to barricade herself in the bedroom. Liz turns around to see Don emerging from the closet, his whole body slashed to the bone and bleeding. Crying and bleeding, Don admits his affair but promises to change. Liz rejects him and then Don uses the cutter on his face, tearing his skin apart to reveal a deranged Sarah inside him. She makes a run for it in the living room and sees Milo's dead body in the walls. As she turned to the gaping hole that Don had covered up, a new opening emerged, water pouring out from it. Two hands rip the hole open and out comes the deranged woman, ready to sink her teeth into her. Liz grabs a hammer and smashes her head, spilling the black ooze all over the floor. She runs out of the house and comes face to face with Ellie. It turns out that Ellie knew all along about the house. Each person who chooses to enter must face their actions. Determined to lift the curse, Liz stays on and finds Sarah's skeletal remains in the closet. They give it a proper burial to put her soul at rest. Six months later, Liz's daughter is born. She's decided to live in the house with her daughter. As she leaves the room, a marble falls from the grate on the ceiling. As the baby looks up, Don's eyes peek through the grate. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.